I'd like to welcome you to uh, our detail session today, which is logging before 1950. And our special guest is Bob Walker. Bob has uh, uh, started his career, I think, in the Lower Mainland by the sound of things, and then moved into this area. Has spent a lot of his time in uh, Whistler area and Pemberton. We'd like to start off by uh, what brought you to this area in the first place. To go on. George and I were started up Parker in 1940. We came here, and I think George was here about 44, and I came here in 46. And we had a straw mill, and we had a team of horses, and we pulled the dogs on the bush for horses, fought in the lumber, and we made ties for the railroad. So that's what we started out at. Then Fleetwood Logs moved in. They go up our claim with a bottle of timber, of course. <laughs> so we started working for wages for them. And that old cat was sitting out here on the side. That's the first machine was here. I pulled the first logs out of the bush to start the float camp in Little Lake. And that camp was there for years. All the houses, the bunk houses, and the was all one raft. It would turn into a Cascade Fur Products company, now we did it. And we got Ryan Creek logs. And we put that all along that up there, put a road in there. We had five trucks a day on out of there. Twice a day. Two, two loads each truck. Fourteen loading cars a day on the road. Well, we actually went out into the bush in 1940, I know we, Joe Aunt Nelly came in here and was telling us about his chainsaws and, uh, and I think when he started out he was doing a lot of hand bucking. Well, we never had chainsaws, we just had hands on. Hands on stuff with axes and cross cuts. Just cross cuts. Yeah. And the uh, two natives did the call the Okay. And a guy named Spetz, Bill Spetz, he uh, did the skinny for the horses. So when did you really start using uh, sort of, uh, bulldozers and Heavier equipment. About, uh, I think about the 1958. You know, when you have uh, logs and you set up a mill, one of the most important parts of the logging operation is not just the actual cutting of the tree, but it's building the roads into, uh, you know, get access for the timber. You know, that, was, yeah, that was my job for, with the logging companies, was, I was on the dozer. Cat, making the truck roads. Mm -hmm. And most of the scars you left on here, I get them. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the Green Riverside, on Mount Prairie, yeah. Mackenzie, and Ryan Creek. So you must have been involved with uh, uh, blasting and. Yeah, we have a powder man, yeah. a driller. Tell us a little bit about throwing a bridge across the river. Across the, the Ryan Creek, oh, yeah. but you had to build the, the crib first at each end. On a good sized log, and you filled the crib full of boulders so the water wouldn't move it. And then a, a link melt machine we could take up a, a, a log, and most of the time we'd heal it right up. Mm -hmm. You could put a 40 foot span in uh, with one swing. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bridge would made of logs taped together. And then you cover them with dirt because you've got a mud bridge. Oh. It was only good for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they call you guys independent jippos or something? Any of the little guys? That, I mean, there was a, a huge... I remember we were up at the Caribou and everywhere you looked there was a tiny little logging operation. Yep. And the guys were three, four-man crews going in there and sawing logs. And, I'm, and I think Joe said that he was sort of doing the same thing here. Yep. Well, I learned to sell lumber at Parker's when I was a kid. That big, that was a steam mill. And uh, used to sell up around 40, 45,000 board feet a day. We also made the railroad ties. I cut ties to the BC Electric. That was that electric train that went from Vancouver to Sioux, right? Right. Yeah. And Urban. Yeah. I cut ties to that railroad. 
apparently you had to take the train out or you walked. And That's uh, right. And they used to have to take Union Steamship from Vancouver to get to Swampish, which took hours. <laughs> you took off Vancouver at 8 o'clock in the morning, and you got there to Pembroke Airport at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, so what, yeah, so what, I know when you traveled here, it was uh, pretty much an all day fare, just getting from uh, Vancouver to Pembroke. But when you got here, let, let's say you uh, had a show up at Ryan Creek. Did, did you ever set up a camp up uh, Upper Valley or? No, the camp was all down here at uh, Mount Curry. Okay. Yeah. So you were able to. I mean, a couple of others still Mount Curry from the camp. Oh, okay. I don't know where the laundromat is. That's really there. Oh, yeah. That okay. was, was a floor to have. Oh, okay. They were all brought up off the, off the rafts and put out of place. So, so you mentioned that when you were rafting a little bit late, they. Uh, all of the buildings we're sitting on, I guess, cedar wraps. The big wraps. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and then you would tow those down to where you had a logging show. The A-frame was parked against the uh, shore, and then you would start yarding this stuff down off the hill. Yeah, and the float camp was, a, they, had, they had a tugboat called the River Echo that pulled it around. Oh, yeah. How big was that? The float? Yeah. It was about a 28-foot. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll put a fireball thing. Anyway, so. And then they would drop this stuff into the uh, lake yeah. and sort of yeah. make a boom of it, or they floated across to, to the Mount Curry side of the lake. Yeah. And they had a, what they call a hay rack, loading machine there. And it's a wind pole and a swing tool. Uh -huh. And you used to tongs went into the water and pick the logs up and swung them over them on trucks. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they brought them to uh, Loading pot in Mount Curry. Right with the church, if that was a loading work. Okay, with Continental Pole sort yeah. of in there. And pole yeah. <clears throat> okay. yeah. So, what would a <laughs> typical uh, uh, working day be for you? I know uh, in the summer they used to start really, really early some days, particularly dry season because of the, uh, the you know, the dew factor. They wanted to keep it when it was. Uh, Still moist, but give us a typical day in July. Well, if it was hot days, you, you, you know, there was early shift. You probably start at four in the morning, and you work till noon or something. And uh, other than that, you started at seven in the morning, two to five. It's a regular day. Yeah, regular day. But sometimes my early shift would last all summer. <laughs> yeah, I can. See. See why? Yeah, we've had some really hot summers here in the, yeah. the old days. Money wise. Money wise? Yeah, right, money wise. I know when I started working at the mill, it wasn't for very much money. No, well, I, you started earlier, so it was even less. When I first started uh, on the Parker's mill, I got 25 cents an hour. What year are we talking about? 1940. Mm -hmm. 25 yeah. cents an hour? Two oh. bucks a day. Two bucks a day. Yeah. Yeah. Did they give you a board for that, or did no, you pay your board? Or you know? <laughs> they taxes. They what? took taxes off too in those days. Well, I don't know what kind of tax we paid. Most of it would come up with board, and they had a commissary where you bought your clothes, your socks, your overalls, and stuff. And actually, end up with all our money. But <laughs> we worked uh, five and a half days. Oh, five and a half. So you did six and a half. No, six and a half days. Six and a half days. Yeah. We worked. The only time we got off was Saturday afternoon and Sunday. Okay, wow. Well, that's for 25 cents an hour. Yeah. 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 So, so when did he start getting into the big bucks? The big bucks when I come here, I got a dollar and a half an hour. Oh, yeah. I drove that dozer cap for a dollar and a half an hour. And uh, that would be about, what, 1950? Yeah, 50s and right up to... Uh, I got a dollar seventy-five before I quit, and that was in 1964. If you worried too much about money, it was a, it was a comfortable food and bunk house, and it was always warm. And I didn't have to worry about nothing. I went to Pocos every day and ate, and went back to bunk with the state. Mm -hmm. 
you didn't leave camp very much because you had to go by that, through a train which took all day, so actually you stayed there all the time. <laughs> what did you do for recreation in the evening? I uh, fished the lake. Green Lake was a good place to fish. Mm -hmm. I just supply all the fish that they cook in the cookhouse. I remember he gave me a heck one day for it to clean them and take them all out. He says, next time don't touch them because I want the heads. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was there uh, any movies they ever came in or things yeah, like that? Yeah, there were movies. We had a little projector on there, a, a light plant. And, oh, okay. You know, yeah. So it's pretty, pretty primitive living otherwise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was better than the... You know, we had come through a depression actually in the 20s and the 30s and that. Nobody had any money. And I was one of nine kids, so somebody had to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't work it. If this, we had typical winters back then that we have, uh, we're used to here. They started snowing and it didn't stop until uh, March or April. But uh, so when was a typical season? Work here in the wintertime. You had to keep plowing roads and stuff. I had a job for one winter in February, plowing road from Pemberton to uh, Callahan Creek. When the railroad was on a strike, we opened up the road for traffic. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember going through uh, Whistler with that cat. <coughs> that damn cat was uh, buried in snow. It was about, uh, must have been six, seven feet on the road. Well, let's see. Fires. Must have been a fire was a big part of the logger's life. Must have had some fires. Fires in your day. Well, they used to come and get the crew to fight fire a lot. So they used the people that were available out doing that. They come and pick them out and grow with the bush. They just fight fire. And that was 25 cents an hour. <laughs> Do you remember when the last steam uh, machine was used? The last what? Wait, steam, steam powered thing. You said that they had a... Well, that Parker's mill with the steam. And that was just steam pretty power. much the end of it? That was the last one I seen. Yeah. Did they, when did they phase out the steam donkeys and start using gas powered and diesels? It had to be in the 50s sometime. All that place that uh, the Alpine Meadows and through that country was all logged with steam donkey. Oh, okay. Anybody? What's that? That's a steam, steam donkey. Steam donkey? Steam donkey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a. You know what a donkey is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing with winches on the right table. It, uh, it had to on steam. Oh, okay. And they had the guy that had to cut wood for it all the time to keep the water going, keep steam on. There was a mill site where the new high school is and all those houses in there when we came in the 60s. I think I think the building was down. But what mill was that and when did it stop working? Do you know? Danny Franks. And when did it shut down? I think it burned out. <laughs> yeah. Do you know when the logging was done um, across the railroad tracks um, from our place? You know, you, you cross the Little Wet River and there's that uh, piece of land in there before you get to the old road, the, the original road that went from the end of Pemberton Farm Road, you know, where the... Um, across the tracks from Fulton. Yeah, and, oh, and there's... Fulton's. Fulton's. Yeah, across the, yeah, the other side of the Little Wet yeah, River I, there. I put that road in there. Did you? And and when was that logged in the 30s or 40s? That was, uh, that was logged in the 50s. In the 50s. Yeah. Okay. When old Joe and Nelly had a little mill down there, he had a sign in front that says, Conk and Not Lumber Company. <laughs> <laughs> what was it called? Conk and Not. Conk and Not. Conk and Not. That's funny. Did, did you say that you. Uh, Logged on the Mount Curry side across the green? Yeah. Oh. When did you do that? There were lots of bridges across the Green River at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, 
A would be for the first bridge across. And then we would have gone there and uh, rolled more piling in, put a more substantial bridge in. And I put the road right down and around the back of the road. Put in it all. Our little timber berth was about maybe 500,000 board feet a year. Fleet mm. come in, Fleet would come in, and their quota was 12 million. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's and they, we couldn't buy timber anymore because they owned it all. So that sort of eased out the little guy. Well, the, the little guy had no chance. Actually, we were, we were not paying much money for the timber, but I think it was $3 a thousand for stubbage. And people, I think they paid 14 <laughs> How old were you when you first entered the bush? Fifteen. Oh my God! <laughs> Send my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on a tugboat before that, but I was twelve on a tugboat. Oh, you <laughs> did you? Towed logs from uh, Upper Harrison down to Westminster. Oh the my word! I was a deck handler. You had a close call with the uh, Fraser River. Was there a lot of accidents in the bush when you left? One, one of the young fellows on the boat drowned. He uh, went to river one night, and I guess he got up out of the cabin and went to the back of the boat to go to the bathroom and disappeared. And only missed him for a long time. Wow. Don't know where he fell in. He was a young kid, too. That's a dangerous river to fall in. Yeah, it's fast flowing. Yeah, and it's got it's, it's sorts of sand in it, too, you know. My biggest uh, thing that night when I fell in was when I got to shore, I could see the shore, so I thought I could stand up, and I couldn't, so I went down again. Mm -hmm. I've reported missing for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they found me all wet from the river bank. <laughs> Bob, you say you remember when there wasn't so much uh, debris in the lake. You were saying a lot of the debris in the lake today is from all the logging. Well, the fleet would, the fleet would pull all that in there off the bank. They A-framed the, uh, the shoreline. They just pulled the log down into the water and it brought all the stumps and junk and stuff in the lake. And the raft of junk still floats around the day. But then the lake went down to one end and went back to the other end. I think logging did cause a bit of erosion on the hillside and that. But and, up there. and you mentioned fishing earlier. You must have been that lake must have been alive with fish when you were when you first started fishing. Green Lake? Oh good. There yeah. Lots of fish. Yeah. Yeah. Rainbows and dolphins. Hmm? Big dollies and rainbows? Yeah. 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 I remember going down when I was young down to the narrows there and there was about twenty people and everybody had about fifty fish. Yeah. There were so many fish there. Uh, they were just, uh, you can't do nothing now. Cascade Ferry used to be located in Mount Curry. And for those of you that aren't aware of it, the, uh, right across the motel there was that uh, bluish building. I think it's a fourplex now. Mm -hmm. that, I think that was your shop, wasn't that it? That shop, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, they shut down, the uh, office mm -hmm. that became the Hitching Post mm -hmm. movie theater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now that was a scene out of the Wild West because <laughs> people used to go there to watch a show and then you had to wear a hard hat in the front row because they'd be throwing beer bottles from the back. <laughs> thanks for coming out folks and thanks Bob for relating some of the uh, incidents of the old days.